Mr. Speaker, um, insofar as um, that issue, that issue, Mr. Speaker, um, which, which is about the limitation of investigation and inquiry by the Senate and the works of the Committee of the Senate, Mr. Speaker, I want to submit that this Constitution, when it provides in Article 125 that the Senate can summon anybody, it means anybody and everybody across the country. Mr. Speaker, the last thing I want to say on that point is that when you read Article 94 of the Constitution, just for purpose of educating those who don't have uh, knowledge about what the Constitution says, Article 94 of the Constitution, Mr. Speaker, provides for also Parliament. Parliament, Mr. Speaker, has been defined in Article 93 to mean National Assembly and the Senate. And if you read Article 94, Mr. Speaker, it says that the legislative authority of the Republic is derived from the people at the national level, is vested and exercised by Parliament. Mr. Speaker, that emphasis is important because when we talk about the role of Parliament in ensuring that we pass all bills, and I've said on the, in the, on the floor of this House, that Mr. Speaker, when we, disc when we talk about laws being passed by Parliament, it's either, Mr. Speaker, as has been approved by your office as a speaker that it doesn't concern counties or that, Mr. Speaker, all the bills will concern counties. Mr. Speaker, if you, so many things, including amending the Constitution, Parliament protects the Constitution and promotes democratic governance of the Republic. Uh, no person or body other than Parliament has the power to make provision on the force of law in Kenya and so forth. So, Mr. Speaker, when you come to the specifics of Article 94 and 95 and 96, you realize that the only responsibility that has been limited insofar as is, is the lawmaking, which is bills concerning counties. But in terms of investigating, uh, performing its responsibility, even if you go to Article 124, Mr. Speaker, 124 of the Constitution also recognized that Parliament, both houses of Parliament, and this is a, a very clear, each house of Parliament may establish committees and shall make standing orders for the orderly conduct of its proceedings, including the proceedings of its committees, Mr. Speaker. Meaning that, Mr. Speaker, the committees of Parliament have equal jurisdiction to investigate any matter across the country. Because there are people who are erroneously lying to themselves out there that Senate should not ask certain issues. And we must make it clear that there is no limitation as to what Senate can inquire in this great Republic of Kenya. And reports of the Senate, just reports of National Assembly, just like reports of the county assemblies, carry, Mr. Speaker, the same weight, constitutional weight, in terms of their reports that have been made by representatives of the people of Kenya, capturing issues that the people of Kenya are talking about. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, I appreciate our friends in the National Assembly are panicking because I hold an office of majority leader and Senator Orengo is holding an office of minority leader. And Mr. Speaker, Thank God I have worked with Senator uh, Orengo for over six years. We do not suffer inferiority complex, Mr. Speaker. In fact, Mr. Speaker, we do not suffer the, this idea of having to be called big men. Mr. Speaker, our responsibility here is to be servants of the people of Kenya. And Mr. Speaker, when you go around trying to say, oh, you know, my office of National Assembly should be recognized, or the office of the Senate should not be recognized, Mr. Speaker, we want to tell those who are suffering that kind of inferiority complex, Mr. Speaker, that we are not interested in entering a pig's fight with them. We are more interested in what we can deliver as members of parliament for the benefit of the people of Kenya. And I want to tell them this. If you think you want to intimidate us, Mr. Speaker, the, the, the fact that the majority leader in the Senate, Mr. Speaker, is leading a process of going to court to establish the truth on laws of the Republic of Kenya should, should actually tell these characters that we are beyond intimidation. Mr. Speaker, we are dealing with matters that are of universe. We are not dealing with matters that are related to a small office there, a small office here. So, Mr. Speaker, if someone wants to be called Mr. Big Man, he can focus on that wherever he is. 
But Mr. Speaker, us in this house, whether you are a senator who, has, who is a member of a committee or a majority leader or a chair of a committee, we recognize that we are here to hold responsibility. We are holding responsibility that given by the people of Kenya to be used for the benefit of the people of Kenya. And we will remain focused on that responsibility. We will not be dissuaded. We will not be, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, I, I, I read the last thing I want to say. I read a motion in the National Assembly trying to purport, purporting, Mr. Speaker, that this House passes laws with less than 24 people. Mr. Speaker, there is no single legislation in this House that has been passed by this House other than that which has been passed by over 50 plus one of senators. Yet if we go to National Assembly, they pass laws by just uh, acclamation, Mr. Speaker. We cannot even find on the record whether there were 10 people in the House, whether there were 15. Despite the fact that they have, a, Mr. Speaker, a quorum of 50 people out of a, 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 a house that is like a classroom of three, three, Mr. Speaker, three streams. Mr. Speaker, a four streams, a, a, a school, a school of four streams, Mr. Speaker, down order, there, order, they cannot order, even raise, leader. they cannot even raise 50 senators, Ms. A, M, members of National Assembly. But this house, there is no day we pass or make any decision that affect Kenyans without having 50 plus one senators, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, they respect, they must respect this house because this house makes decisions as per the Constitution, Mr. Speaker, with a super majority, Mr. Senator Mr. Speaker, Sakaja? that is meant to protect the interests of Kenyans. Mr. Mr. Speaker, um, the leader of majority has compared the National Assembly to a high school. Is it because of the numbers or the behavior or both? Uh, I'd like that, uh, <laughs> that clarification from the, from the leader of majority. Uh, leader of majority, as you clarify, uh, be guided by the standing orders. Mr. Speaker, you know, English is that I did not say the National Assembly is, uh, is a high school, but it's like the numbers are like a high school, Mr. Speaker. And some of the behavior of their leaders are uh, like for headmasters I saw when I was in high school. So, Mr. Speaker, that may be the only comparison that I have seen because if you have uh, uh, people who are behaving in the manner in which they behave in that house, Mr. Speaker, it brings the, 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 the reputation of the house to the level of a high school. Conclude but, uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm concludes. not saying they are a high school, concludes. but it looks like. Conclude, uh, so, Mr. Speaker, what is it, uh, Senator Ochilo Ayako? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I didn't uh, mean to interrupt uh, the majority leader, but the uh, point of order raised by Honorable uh, Senator Sagaja and the majority leader seem to debate as if uh, high school is a bad place. Is it in order for them to continue <laughs> debating as if high school is a, uh, is a bad place? All of us went through high school. Senator Murkomen, what's wrong with uh, high school? <laughs> high school, Mr. Speaker, is a fantastic place but it's a place for formation. You know, St. Paul, as the speaker said, when I was a child, I did the things of children, that children did. But now that I'm a grown-up, I can do things that grown-ups do. So it didn't mean that St. Paul despised the children. It's just at a stage in life. And the speaker, the comparison we are giving is that the National Assembly is still in a certain stage in life. That's okay, leader of majority. It, 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 it's not, it, it's not least, in a negative sense. At least you have confirmed you are once a scientist school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Please so, conclude. So, Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I just want to say this House, we should not be distracted, Mr. Speaker, from the work we do. We must remain focused. The roadmap we set ourselves to follow insofar as uh, ensuring that we protect the Constitution and the institutional integrity of this house, we must continue to follow. Mr. Speaker, I have avoided to say certain things that are related to division of revenue because I know the, the chairman of finance will, uh, is also meant to update this house, Mr. Speaker, on a similar issue. And with your permission, if you can allow me, him to make the same statement, Mr. Speaker, before anyone can react to mine, it will be in consonance because it is the same issues that, Mr. Speaker, we are raising. Mr. Speaker, I, I, I wish to thank you for giving me this opportunity just to make sure that we, make, we encourage our members here to tell them you are doing a fantastic job, continue in the same direction, even when people who are publicizing about which, which members of parliament are doing well. Mr. Speaker, Senator Orengo and I are very proud to say that although we were left out of that ranking for, by virtue of our offices, 
we are very happy that most of the people who have been ranked high are senators of this great house. Mr. Speaker, I wish to thank you, very and, well. uh, Mr. Speaker, for that opportunity. Very well. Very well. I can see the senator from Nairobi demanding specifics of... <laughs> <laughs> Thou shall not blow your own trumpets. <laughs> although, although Senator Wetangula will tell you there is a president of a foreign country who once said they have no, uh, they don't find anything wrong with blowing one's trumpet because it is theirs. The trumpet is theirs anyway. <laughs> Very well. Um, Chairperson, Finance and Budget Committee. After that, I'll allow a few comments and observations. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise first on person to standing order 51 1A of the standing orders of the Senate to make a statement concerning the status of consideration of the Division of Revenue Bill. 2019. Mr. Speaker, sir, the Division of Revenue Bill, National Assembly's National Assembly Bills number 11 of 2019, was published on 6 March 2019. The bill was passed by the National Assembly without amendments on 26th of March 2019 and transmitted to the Senate. The Senate passed the bill with amendments on 30th. April 2019. However, the National Assembly rejected the amendments proposed by the Senate and the bill was referred to a mediation committee passed on to Article 112.2b of the Constitution. Passed on to Article 113.1 of the Constitution and Standing Orders 149.2 of the National Assembly, Standing Orders, and Standing Order 162 of the Senate Standing Orders, the speakers of both houses appointed a mediation committee to attempt to develop a version of the bill that both houses will pass. Mr. Speaker, sir, the mediation committee held its first meeting on, on 3rd May 2019 and two other subsequent meetings. The mediation committee, however, was unable to agree on a version of the bill within the 30 days as contemplated under Article 113.4 of the Constitution, and the bill was defeated. The main contention was on the county equitable share allocation for the financial year 2019-20. The Senate's position was that the, that the counties be allocated Kenya shillings 327 billion based on increasing the previous year's equitable share by 4%, allowing for co-inflation, while the National Assembly's position was that the counties be allocated 316 billion just two billion above the, uh, the, the figure for the last financial year. The committee did not agree on this issue. Therefore, the mediation failed and the Division of Revenue Bill 2019 was defeated. Mr. Speaker, sir, Article 218.1A of the Constitution provides that the Division of Revenue Bill shall divide revenue raised by the national government among the national and county levels of government in accordance with the Constitution. The Division of Revenue Bill, therefore, forms the basis upon which the two levels of government prepare legal instruments for public expenditure. Without the enactment of the Division of Revenue Bill, the consideration and passing of County Allocation of Revenue Bill 2019, a bill which is critical to the efficient management of county government, cannot proceed. Mr. Speaker, sir, Article 224 of the Constitution provides that on the ba I quote, on the basis of the Division of Revenue Bill approved by Parliament under Article 218, each county government shall prepare and adapt its own annual budget and appropriation bill in the form and according to the procedure prescribed by in an act of Parliament. Therefore, the consequence of not passing a Division of Revenue Bill and the county allocation of revenue bill before the beginning of the financial, new financial year is that the county governments are pre, pre, uh, precluded from preparing their own annual budgets and appropriation bills. Failure to pass the Division of Revenue Bill, therefore, has caused uncertainty in the budget process at the county level of government. 
The only remedy available to county governments at the moment is, is set out in section 134, 1 and 2 of the Public Finance Management Act, which provides that, one, if the county appropriation bill for a financial year has not been assented to, or is not likely to be assented to by the beginning of that financial year, a county assembly may authorize the withdrawal of money from the county revenue fund. Two, money withdrawn from uh, withdrawn under section subsection one may be used for only for the purpose of meeting expenditure necessary to carry on the services of the county government during the financial year concerned until such as time as the relevant appropriation law is passed. And B may not be and this figure should, may not exceed in total one half of the amount included in the estimates of expenditure submitted to the county assembly for that year. The speaker sound. However, the provision of section 134 of the Public Finance Management Act contemplates that the portion of uh, the, the option of votes on account will arise where the division of revenue bill and count allocation of revenue bill have been passed. And for which, for whatever reason, a county assembly has not passed an appropriation bill. The section does not contemplate the present, present situation where the division revenue bill has not passed and the national revenue has not been divided between the two levels of government. I emphasize uh, that the national revenue has not been divided between the two levels of government. The counties have therefore been placed in a precarious position as the option of vote on account can only be exercised with respect to funds already present in the respective county revenue funds. As there will be no transfer of any revenue raised nationally to the counties in the absence of a division revenue act, counties will have to run their affairs with a fraction of the funds they actually require. This will have an adverse imp uh, impact on the ability of counties to effectively discharge their functions as set out under the constitution. Mr. Speaker, sir, it is with great concern that you observe that despite the defeat of the Division of Revenue Bill 2019, the National Assembly proceeded to introduce, consider, and pass the Appropriation Bill 2019. The bill was assented to by the President on Friday, 28th, June 2019. Article 221, 3 of the Constitution provides that the Appropriation Bill is passed on the estimates approved by the National Assembly Further, Section 39 of the Public Finance Management Act provides that the National Assembly shall consider annual budget estimate in accordance with the Division of Revenue Act and the resolution adopted with regard to the budget policy statement. Mr. Speaker, sir, the Division of Revenue Bill is the foundation upon which the budgeting process, including determination of expenditure of public funds, both at the national and the county levels, is premised. Both levels of government are therefore precluded from uh, cons considering and approving any legislation dependent upon the, division, uh, upon, uh, upon the Division of Revenue Bill. I'm sorry. The Division of Revenue Bill is the foundation upon which the budgeting process, including the determination of expenditure of public funds, both at the national and county government, is premised. Both levels of governments are therefore precluded from considering and approving any legislation dependent upon the division of national revenue between the national government and the county government, including the county allocation revenue bill, the appropriation bill, and the respective county appropriation bills. The passage and assent to the appropriation bill in the absence of a division of revenue act is a flagrant contravention of the, uh, the provision of the law. This unlawful section, this unlawful action cannot it not only puts to question the legal veracity of any action done under the Appropriation Act 2019, but also undermines the national values set out under the Constitution, and especially the duty to uphold the rule of law and good governance. So, Speaker, sir. Further, the enactment of the Appropriation Bill 2019 contravenes the public finance principles expounded under Article 2011 of the Constitution, and in particular, the duty to ensure that relevant revenue raised nationally shall be shared equitably among national and county governments. By enacting the Appropriation Act, Appropriation Bill 2019, there has been a purported allocation of revenue to the national government without a similar allocation to county governments. 
The national government will therefore continue to discharge its functions at an optimal level, while counties will be hard pressed to provide even the most basic services. This contravenes the objects and principles of devolution, and in particular, Article 174G, which provides that one, one of the objects of the devolution is to ensure equitable sharing of national and local resources throughout Kenya, and Article 175B, which requires county governments to have reliable source of uh, revenue to enable them to govern and deliver services effectively. The speakers are, in the light of the foregoing, the Senate must caution any state organ charged with the implementation of Appropriation Act 2019, including the National Treasury, and the control of budget, that any action taken under the Act may be unlawful, as it, is, as it would be fruit of the poison tree, as they say in law. The Act was enacted unlawfully and in contravention of the provisions of the law, and any action taken or purported to be taken under it will be illegal. However, Notwithstanding the illegality of any action taken either by the National Assembly or the Executive, the two Houses of Parliament must prioritize the re reintroduction, consideration, and passage of the Division Revenue Bill 2019 in order to enable counties to prepare their annual budgets in accordance with Article 224 of the Constitution. The speakers are, regret, regret, regrettably, this is not the first time the Division of Revenue Bill has been a step in controversy. It behoves both houses of parliament to recall that in 2013, the Senate instituted suit at the Supreme Court to determine the role of the Senate in the post process of division of national revenue. In the advisory opinion number two of 2013, which, ruling, which, which, ruling, which ruled in favor of the Senate, the court made the following observation on the role of devolution in our country's, country's governance structure. And I quote, the Kenyan people, by the Constitution of Kenya, 2010, chose to deconcentrate state power, rights, duties, competencies, shifting substantial aspects to county government to be exercised in the county units for better and more equitable delivery of the goods of the political order. The dominant perception at the time of constitution making was that such a deconcentration of power would not only give greater access to, to the social goods previously regulated centrally, but would also open up the scope for political self-fulfillment through an enlarged scheme of actual participation in governance, governance mechanisms by the people, thus giving more fulfillment to the concept of democracy. The speakers are, by passing the provision bill 2019 and ensuring that the national government continues to operate while counties are unable to deliver service to the people is a direct attack on our democracy and a clawing back on the will of the people of Kenya for greater participation in public affairs and the efficient delivery of public services. The Senate must stand on the right side of history during this dark time and ensure that the promise of devolution as expounded in our constitution is realized at any cost. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Senators, allow me to acknowledge the presence in the public gallery this afternoon, visiting students and teachers from Mary Leake Girls School, Kiambu County. In our usual tradition of receiving and welcoming visitors to Parliament, I extend a warm welcome to them. On behalf of the Senate and on my own behalf, I wish them a fruitful visit. Thank you. Very well. So. The visiting students and teachers are welcome. Let's now have some, uh, if there are any observations or comments on the statement by the leader of majority and the statement by the chairperson of finance and budget. Um, leader of minority. Uh, speaker. Both statements which have been made by the leader of majority and the chairman for the committee for finance are very, very important statements. In fact, I think in another 10, 20 years time, when we look back at the statements which have been made in this house today by the two uh, distinguished senators, uh, we will know 
the importance of these two statements because they go to the core of our own constitutional dispensation and structure of government. Mr. Speaker, I want to speak generally because uh, there are those two statements that have been made, but speak to the point. And I urge my brothers and sisters, distinguished senators, uh, to remember the words of uh, Michelle Obama, that when they go low, we go high. I would urge you, let us not look like we are discussing the National Assembly. The issue that we're discussing is a matter that goes to the core of the Constitution. And this Constitution was enacted in order to avoid concentration of power in any one institution. In fact, sometimes some people believe that there's a lot of power in the presidency under this Constitution. Even under this Constitution, those powers were distributed to independent offices, to commissions, which are set out in Chapter 15. Under the old constitution, the legislative authority of the republic was only in the National Assembly. But that power has now been distributed between the legislatures at the national level and at the county level, and at the national level must be shared between the Senate and the, 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 the National Assembly. And, and therefore, I, I feel very, very sad having had some of the comments that are made in the National Assembly. There's a famous play by Shakespeare called Hamlet, and uh, it, is, uh, it is not without significance that uh, Shakespeare chose one of the characters who was just a palace guard to comment on what was happening in the kingdom of Ken uh, Denmark at that time. And he said, what's with this effect? that there's something rotten in the state of Denmark. I am beginning to believe that there's something rotten in Kenya because when we are trying to make things work, some people don't want institutions to work. And I am happy that the, the chair of BBI is here yeah, in a, <coughs> an effort to try and make things work. The parliament and senate and the national assembly, there is a mechanism to make sure that we work as an institution. There is no law that is made in the Republic of Kenya which is made is, is, is titled law or, or a statute enacted by the National Assembly. If you go to the statute books, you go to the Constitution itself, the National Assembly has no capacity to make any law under the Constitution of Kenya. The laws in Kenya are made by Parliament. And that is why it is important that, that in every bill, leave, leave alone the Division of Revenue Bill, that they must seek the concurrence of the Speaker of the Senate. That is the only route under which you can have an enactment that becomes the law of Kenya. And the arguments which have been brought out in the National Assembly, for example, they are saying that we cannot summon cabinet secretaries. Senator Murkomen has talked about the general section, Article 125, which uh, allows us to summon everybody but when it comes to cabinet secretaries under Article 153, sub Article 3, it says that cabinet secretary shall present themselves both to the National, uh, the, uh, the National Assembly and the Senate when re they are required. And there's no distinction. All cabinet secretaries are required to appear before the Senate where they are required. And if there is anybody who uh, is in doubt, read that particular section. And they actually, they are supposed to give quarterly reports. Each cabinet secretary, they are supposed to give quarterly reports to both houses, uh, not just to the National Assembly, but also to the, to the Senate. I would urge the leadership in the National Assembly to read the Constitution holistically. The Constitution is not supposed to be read like some people who read the Bible and only can memorize one verse. I would remind them that if you want to apply the Constitution properly, understand it from Article 1 to the last article, then you will know how to apply the Constitution. For example, Mr. Speaker, if you leave, read the provisions that deal with national security, the appointment of the Inspector General, the reporting uh, under the security organs of the state, the place, the central place of the Senate is recognized because this Constitution wants a devolved system of government. And therefore, 
the Division of Revenue Bill, which has not been enacted with the concurrence of the Senate, the Mediation Committee not having agreed, cannot create a basis for unilaterally uh, the enactment of an, an Appropriations Act. In the United States, we see quite often, uh, you know, the, the, the entire uh, federal government uh, is sent off because, you know, the parliament has not, has not passed an Appropriations Act. The whole government goes away, uh, you know, in, in respect of the Constitution. And here, we pass an Appropriations Act which is contrary to the Constitution, contrary to the Public Finance Management Act, and we are supposed just to laugh. Me, I would want to advise my friends in the, uh, in the other house. We have seen people talking the way they are talking many, for many years. We have seen many. And the person who said power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely is damn right because the, the language they are speaking, they are languages of autocrats, not of Democrats who know why parliaments are established. And the way they speak about the, 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 the Senate is so demeaning. I will never speak about an institution of, of government in such, a, in such terms, be it the judiciary, I will speak about it with respect, be it the presidency, but for somebody to say that Senate is an idle institution, that kind of person did not take a proper oath because that oath requires him to defend and protect the Constitution. And that Constitution protects the Senate and the counties. And if they continue with that language, it means that they want to kill devolution. They want to kill devolution. And Article 10 of the Constitution says one of the principles of governance is the devolution of power. Late Kajuang used to talk every time about the dev devolution, dispersal of power, division of power. And we now we have a, a National Assembly who do not see the role of the Senate. The role of the Senate was seen by those who made this constitution. Knowing that there are times when the participation of the two houses will be very, very, very important. In fact, the participation of the Senate is a quality control eh? because, you know, in the other house, bills are passed, you know, sometimes without having a constitutional threshold. Our bills are, are passed through a constitutional threshold and are accountable to the counties because every member of this assembly, this Senate, how you vote is a matter of public notoriety. Somebody can go to the record to determine how you voted. So being accountable, we are very careful the way we vote. And this is the house where there must be some level of quality control. If you go to France, the role of the Senate, in fact, uh, when we went for a visit there one time and we were taken through the motions, they say the most intricate legislation must go through the Senate because they say that is a house where a lot of hours can be spent with the amount of detail that, that they will require before a complicated legislation can be passed. You can see in the United States of America, in the Philippines, how the two houses relate to build a better country and a better uh, re republic. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, I would not want to take a lot of time because there are a lot of people who want to speak to the point, but uh, I, I am saying this that uh, there are some people who are forgetting about this new environment that we have so that we are able to resolve things in accordance with the law and, and, and the Constitution. Uh, name calling is not going to help. And the solution to this matter is to bring back an act or a legislation to cure what has already been done. But I support those that now that they have shown us the knife, we have no alternative but to go to court and have this matter determined once and for all. And I hope that every member of this Senate will not hesitate in a week or 10 days' time when this matter is taken to court. We need to be together in this otherwise. They will kill this Senate like the one they killed many, many, many years ago. And that Senate used to, to sit here. And it would be a great tragedy 
that those who fought for this constitution would see the Senate and devolution die. Because if you deny counties funds, the, resu the resultant effect is that you don't want those counties to operate. And therefore, I, I, I appreciate the statement made by the chair, finance. It is a well-considered statement, and it should be attached to the pleadings that we are going to file in court. Uh, I think you are going to be cited, that statement is going, going to be cited in a judgment because it's a well thought out statement and sets out the law as to how to handle the division of revenue bill before the budget process proper begins. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Order. Order, Senator Moy. Order, Senators. Uh, thank you, Leader of Minority. Uh, I think you and the Majority Leader and the Chairman have set a good tone as a way of a general guidance. I want to clarify uh, so that we don't have so many points of orders that um, standing order 96 on contents of speeches does prohibit discussing proceedings in the National Assembly. But there is a proviso. It is not supposed to be a gag. And I want to read 96, standing order 96 on contents of speeches. It says, part five, it shall be out of order for a senator to criticize or call to question the proceedings in the National Assembly or a county assembly or the speaker's ruling in the National Assembly. But any debate may be allowed. And that is the part that might allow you to say a few things. Any debate may be allowed on the structures and the roles of county assemblies or the National Assembly. Structures and the roles of the National Assembly, those can be discussed. But it is out of order to call into question or to criticize proceedings. Proceedings, not the institution, proceedings. With that guidance, I'll now allow a few senators to make a few comments. Um, and because the level of interest is extremely high, uh, no more than five minutes per speaker. Senator Aaron Cheruyot. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you for that guidance. Uh, we will really try and uh, obey it. <laughs> you will try, or you? <laughs> you, know, you know, Mr. Speaker, they say all is fair in love and war. We are at war, so we, we will try and deploy all the resources available. But uh, tellingly, Mr. Speaker, I think the point where we need to begin this is perhaps even a point of reflection of how much the standing orders in the National Assembly do allow certain things. We know central to this debate about uh, the permission on which bills should go to the Senate and which ones can be assented to directly, Mr. Speaker, is that cheekingly, the National Assembly did include in their standing orders a provision that allows them to um, sort of bypass the Constitution and determine by themselves on what laws we can consider and which ones we cannot. Therefore, I would wish, um, uh, Mr. Speaker, that as we debate this, we also consider that part of what leadership of the uh, Senate needs to do is to consider and look into all the provisions of the standing orders in the uh, lower house that fall afoul of the Constitution and allows them to do the kind of things that they are doing, which are completely illegal and should not be allowed anywhere else, uh, Mr. Speaker. It is really unfortunate that it has got to come to this because all of us come from an understanding of knowing the price that Kenyans had to pay for us to achieve the 2010 Constitution, a Constitution that devolved power resources, and all 
uh, that is central to making the lives of Kenyans better. In all our interactions, um, Mr. Speaker, and I say, I say this as a member of the Finance and Budget Committee, both in the last parliament and this particular one, we have always tried to be rational, trying to balance, knowing that there is no uh, bottomless pit of resources in this country. Therefore, it is not that Senate comes out of uh, a perception knowing that we must continually send as much resources to the counties as possible. But the figures that we always arrive at, Mr. Speaker, are guided uh, empirically by things that we consider to be central when you're determining how to divide revenue between county and national government. Things like, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, even agreeing, Mr. Speaker, with provisions that have been given by constitutionally mandated bodies like CRA, it will be worth noting, Mr. Speaker, that in this particular statement, CRA agreed with what the Committee on Budget proposed as will be the correct figure to be sent to the counties, taking into consideration issues like inflation and all those matters. Therefore, it is not just a figure that as Finance and Budget Committee, we plucked out of the sky and said, you need to send 335 billion to the counties. These are figures that we know. And in fact, if you read our report, Mr. Speaker, that we did during the consideration of budget uh, of uh, BPS, as budget and committee, one of the key highlights and the things that we said must be considered before we go to the next division of revenue is determination of what is considered to be national interest. Because this is an avenue that national government has continued to exploit for many years to ensure that counties are underfunded. National interest, in my opinion, and that of many of our colleagues who we sit together in the Finance and Budget Committee, they vary from one year to the other. Therefore, it cannot be a constant that on each and every particular year, you want to insist on a particular amount or a particular uh, figure as a determination between national security and all those uh, many things that national government continue uh, to use, uh, Mr. Speaker, in the determination of this particular issue. Therefore, I want to urge and encourage my colleagues that if there has been a moment that we are being called out to stand up for devolution, then it is this particular moment. This has got absolutely nothing to do with political parties. It has got absolutely uh, nothing to do whether we like the government in, in power or not. But it goes to the very core of whether we believe in devolution or not. Should we back down, uh, Mr. Speaker, as one uh, pro, uh, uh, perhaps so prophetically by Senator James uh, Orengo, the leader of minority, then we can as well kiss, uh, kiss devolution goodbye and be prepared to feature so boldly but in a terrible manner in the annals of history as the house that watched as devolution sunk and disappeared out of uh, this republic. Therefore, with those uh, many remarks, Mr. Speaker, because in the interest of time and knowing that many of our colleagues want to contribute, I rest my case and do ask my colleagues to stand and stand firm. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Senator Tula Kilonso, Jr. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, I would, I would, I'm, I'm told that a lot of the people who are looking for change are saying this house should be made the upper house by law. That means that when you find children quarreling, you don't start quarreling with them. I believe the National Assembly are ignorant of the law. And if they're ignorant of the law, we should ignore them. The Constitution is clear, Mr. Speaker, just for the record, under Article 110, a bill concerning county government is a bill containing provisions affecting functions and power of county governments, a bill relating to election matters to account of a county assembly, and C, a bill referred to Chapter 12 affecting the finances of county governments. Mr. Speaker, there's nothing that the National Assembly is doing, whether it's debt, whether it's borrowing, that does not concern counties. But what bothers me, Mr. Speaker, is the fact that it appears that the division of revenue is becoming a matter appearing that, sh that should be given attention by county assemblies. The division of revenue, and we had this debate with the National Assembly colleagues during the mediation. As far as they are concerned, when it comes to division of revenue, the only figure we should look at is the figure called equitable share. 
And that is why the suit and the suit prepared by the Senate must be filed. The affidavit to be signed by Speaker Lusaka must be signed, and it's not optional. Because if we do not get an interpretation of matters affecting counties and matters concerning counties, Mr. Speaker, we might as well fold up and go home. Mr. Speaker, somebody, we invited a consultant on this issue. And this is what the consultant says. And this must concern us. And I was hoping that the chairman BBI would be here. He says, the thing that will kill county governments is allocation of revenue and budgets. The conspirators of 1966 have cloned themselves. They have come back. They sit in the National Assembly, Mr. Speaker, and they are killing devolution. Through what? Budget. The allocation of county governments, Mr. Speaker, has declined from 4.3 when we went to the Supreme Court to 3% of GDP. And this, they do it very slowly. Soon enough, we are only going to pay salaries. Members of the Senate who are here, some of you who want to be governors, you will be governors just to pay salaries. You will not make any move at the current rate, uh, Mr. Speaker. The same people, Mr. Speaker, have gone and interfered with our mandate in that ruling of the Court of Appeal that says the Senate has no role on on source revenue. Meanwhile, CRA has brought a formula here which formula, Mr. Speaker, we are trying to interrogate for purposes of increasing revenue of counties in terms of their collections. The solution is not even this debate. The solution is a day next week. We walk to the High Court with a suit in the name of the Speaker of the Nation of the Senate against the Speaker of the National Assembly. Let's give it to the court. Let's tell Mr. Ma Justice Maraga that a time a constitutional moment has come for him to interpret Article 1103 as what it means, an act of parliament where Speaker Muturi decides on his own that a bill does not concern county governments. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Naomi Wako. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, for allowing me to add my voice to this very important uh, statement. Uh, Mr. Speaker, as Senate, we should all be concerned with what is happening. Uh, and we are here representing the entire nation. We are here representing the entire nation and on behalf of the devolution. Mr. Speaker, when Senate is attacked, we know very well that devolution is also under attack. Most of the time when we discuss these things, I wonder the intention of all this because it seems as if there is a hidden agenda in what is currently happening in the National Assembly. We are, the National Assembly and the Senate is supposed to serve the common Mwanainchi. Order, order, the two whips. But unfortunately... I don't know what you are whipping. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, because the noise is so loud. I don't know so what loud. you are whipping. And even if you are whipping, that's not how to do it. And this is not where to do it. Order. Order, both of you. Proceed, Senator Wako. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So I'm saying that if there is any time we need to unite and stand up and fight for the right of this house, this is the time, Mr. Speaker. Because what we are doing, we are not doing for ourselves, but we are doing for the entire nation. And I think it is even good for the National Assembly to know that fighting Senate openly is not good at all because we are there to serve Kenyans, and they should 
discuss matters that affect our nation, but not the role of the Senate, which is properly defined in the Constitution. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I support, and let us all be together so that we, ca we can fight for the right of this House. Thank you. Thank you. Very brief to the point, Senator Moses Wetangula. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you read to us the provisions of Standing Order 96.5. I wish you would remind your counterpart in the National Assembly that they also have an equivalent standing order in 87.5, that they are not supposed to do what they did this morning, but they did it anyway. And uh, as a liberal speaker, I think we should allow us to pay them back by the same coin. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I have a feeling that the National Assembly is suffering from what is commonly called the, the Embaranero Syndrome. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Persons who suffer from the Embaranero syndrome will start calling names to innocent intended victims and then turn on them to harm them. In Nikolai Gogol's book called The Government Inspector, Mr. Speaker, an erratic mayor tells his Ascaris, arrest that man and lock him up for theft. The Ascari say, but he hasn't stolen, sir. Then the mayor says, just arrest him. He'll steal one day anyway. That is what the National Assembly is doing to this house, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we must stand up to be counted. The Constitution is so clear, Mr. Speaker. Like those who have spoken before me have said, all bills passed are acts of parliament. If you look at Article 102, it describes the term of parliament, not the term of Senate and term of National Assembly, the term of parliament. If you look, Mr. Speaker, at the petitions that Wanainji bring to these houses, one would expect that more petitions would be going to the National Assembly. But the number of petitions Wanainji bring to this house, Mr. Speaker, are more than five times more that the petitions that go to the National Assembly. Because, Mr. Speaker, Wanainji out there believe that this is the house of reason and this is the house of justice. And I agree with those who have spoken before me, Mr. Speaker, that we should not descend to that level. We must stand by the law. We must stand by the Constitution. Mr. Speaker, the statement made by the chairman of the Finance Committee, the distinguished senator for Mandera, represents our views in the committee. I'm a member of that committee. We discussed it, we agreed, and it's regrettable, Mr. Speaker, that somebody has caused the president to ascend to the appropriation bill that has been passed unconstitutionally. Without DORA, Mr. Speaker, no other legislative process on financing and management of budget can follow. It is very clear. Yet, Mr. Speaker, the National Assembly has gone ahead passed the bill, and I don't know what the advisors have done. They should have told the president that let this impasse between the two houses be sorted out first. Mr. Speaker, now is the constitutional moment for this country. And members of this house, regardless of where we come from or our political affiliation, looking at comparable jurisdictions, Australia, Canada, India, UK, name it. The Senate is always the upper house, the house of revision, the house that is an appellate structure for the National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, I've been seeing bills coming from the National Assembly, and sometimes you wonder whether there is much thinking put in it. You remember in the last parliament, Mr. Speaker, the National Assembly, even mischievously, 
passed a law that intended and purported to exclude this house from making any approval of treaties. Yet the constitution says all treaties signed by the government must be approved by parliament. We had to come here to change the law to protect the interests of this house. So what we must do, Mr. Speaker, as a house, because every success must come with sacrifices. Every success must come with some pain. Members of this house, Mr. Speaker, led by yourselves, must stand up and be counted. In the last parliament, Eko Ethuru as our speaker. What is this, Senator Wambua? What's your point of order? Mr. Speaker, can you kindly uh, require that the Senator from Bogoma be added in silence? We are trying to uh, hear what he's saying, but it's... Order, Senators. Order. Order. Order, Senators. Order. Order, Members. Order. My distinguished nephew was rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> you are distinguished? <laughs> nephew is the distinguished senator for Nairobi. <laughs> he was engaged in a rowdy manner. I thought you had brought relatives here. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, now that we are in a constitutional moment, and the chairman of the BBI are from this house, the joint chairman, Senator Wako, Senator Yusuf Haji, this House, Mr. Speaker, must aggressively pursue a constitutional change where we restore the position of the Senate as to what Senates are worldwide. Mr. Speaker, we have agreed that we are going to court. We already are emboldened by the advisory of the Supreme Court, which we all went to court, including yourself, Mr. Speaker. And the Supreme Court said there is it's unimaginable to think of any legislation that does not touch on counties. Whether you are talking of security, the theater of security is in the county. Whether you are talking of education, schools are found in the county. Whether you are talking of any matter, under schedule for Mr. Speaker, they are all in the counties. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, I want to urge the leadership of this country both the executive and the legislature, not to precipitate an unnecessary political crisis in the country. Because, Mr. Speaker, there are Kenyans out there who will go to court. Probably Omtata is already in court, challenging the constitutionality and legality of the appropriation bill that has now been ascended to. And a good court addressing its mind properly to the law and to the constitution will annul that act. We don't want this country to have this kind of legal ping pong. Every time we move forward, we have to move backwards. Therefore, senators, next week is the week for the Senate. Next week is the day when you must remember a movie called The Verdict. A movie called The Verdict, where Mr. Speaker, the lawyer says there is no other case. This is the case. There is no other case. This is the case, Mr. Speaker, and we must do so. Thank you.